Michael, did you have any public comments? All right. Thank you. Hi, friends. I'm Michael Oxman. I just wanted to brief you on the parks tour of Lincoln Park. Uh, the parks arboriculturist walked us through by the map of 91 trees that are proposed to be removed starting next week. Uh, several of the people there talked about the impact on wildlife during the nesting season. Uh, there was a, a bunch of questions about the context of the 91 uh, risky trees in the context of the entire population of the park. We asked how many trees are in the park, don't know. Um, so it's really difficult to find out what impact 91 trees being removed has on the entire tree population. And there's extensive discussion of this in the urban forest stewardship plan. You can't know what you have. You can't do anything until you know what you have. Um, there was, uh, I guess, discussion of a lawsuit against the city by the family of a person that died when they were struck by a tree that hit their car in Seward Park in March of 2016. Since then, uh, due to the lawsuit and the discovery request by the plaintiffs, the um, uh, records from the Parks Department were subpoenaed. And the Parks Department issued this gag order that no documents could be issued during the life of this uh, discovery order by the, by the uh, judge. So uh, in December, I asked Parks which trees are going to be removed in 2017. And then uh, about three months later, just informally in a casual discussion, I found out that I would not be getting an answer to my question. So uh, I had asked for the maps and uh, uh, diagrams that showed the trees and the database of information associated with which trees Parks was planning on removing. So after our tour today, after I got home at uh, 1.30, I got the map that I had requested in December. So um, I think uh, several of the people on this tour talked about transparency and uh, open communication lines of chat that would be nice if those were extant, but unfortunately that's not what's happening. So, uh, so there you go. Uh, the, I don't know how much money the city had to pay the, the family, but apparently now, since they're talking about it, that must mean that there has been a settlement. Uh, a, a tree service was hired to survey several parks. Uh, we asked how much was that contract, how much did it cost to find out what our risk situation is now. Didn't get answers to those questions because the arborist that led the tour today uh, uh, was not involved at that level of policy discussion. So right now, I think, is kind of one of the low points we have paid a bunch of money to a victim that should have been put into tree maintenance funds. And I, I would love to see us uh, start in on an aggressive tree maintenance program that uh, shifts our money from damage awards uh, to actual uh, results. So thank you for uh, hanging around for an extra couple minutes. Question, what was the response to not waiting to take down these 91 trees until they're outside of the nesting season? They hadn't considered it. Okay. And uh, they did say that they got 140 emergency calls in February based on storms, and that this is the first chance they have to get rid of these trees. And they definitely want to get them down before next, wind, next winter's winds start. But they did uh, uh, ask where the wildlife nest in Lincoln Park which seems really strange to me coming from the park department. Uh, but there were some uh, experts at this, people from uh, several uh, 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 citizens' organizations that are aware of good uh, wildlife information. There's a lot of fun. There are a lot of people there. No, Stuart Wexler was there from, from Seattle Nature Alliance and some uh, uh, Seattle uh, Green Spaces Coalition was there. Could you, could you forward us the map and also to Seattle Audubon because they may have some people that watch the know the birds over there. I can forward that to you easily. So that would be wonderful. Um, 
And actually, I wanted to talk about the canopy cover survey. This week, Adil Kaplan, mm -hmm. uh, who wrote about uh, 8,000 words last summer, is uh, uh, putting the finishing touches on her article about the canopy cover survey. And my comment to her was that we don't have a problem with knowing where our trees are. We have a problem with knowing what condition our trees are in so that we can go to the city council and say, can we please have a budget to take care of this very valuable resource? And so, uh, so I think that uh, the, the transition from the urban forest management plan that had extensive information about a tree database justification to the urban forest stewardship plan that actually devolved that concept. And we need to get back into the concept of not uh, throwing away any pieces until you know what all pieces you have in your toolbox. So, well, I guess you guys didn't get to that on your... We didn't get to that. Um, one real quick question. The removals from uh, which part? Lincoln. Lincoln. Lincoln Park. Those were all based on hazard risk assessments. Yes. Right? Okay. Would you generally agree what you saw? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think um, they Bi are very, they're, know, they're, so. they're biotically oriented down there at the Parks Department. Myself, I'm oriented towards the structure of the tree, and I like to look at the tree's uh, physical manifestation of internal wood stress to decide if it's risky. I think they're over there, and they want to look at where they think there might be infections that cause structural deficiency. And uh, I haven't known any city council people that could get uh, excited about the disease uh, uh, resistance that trees have. Thank you. Great, thank you. Just uh, just want to say a quick thank you to the commission for the work on the letter and really appreciate that. So. Thank you. And I'm, I'm not going to be here next week.